First question looks at comparing these um, four uh, fractions. So we've got a common fraction, a mixed number, and then we've got two decimal fractions. Um, and we need to convert those um, to be similar in order to do the comparison and ask them to list them in um, order from smallest to largest. Okay. So um, how I look at this question is um, we know that the whole number here, three, okay, from a comparison point of view, is going to be um, further along the smaller number, so further along the number line and the negative compared to this one here, negative one, and this one here, negative one. And we know that the, this one here, negative one quarter, is going to be this side of the negative one for there. So the only two that we actually have to do a comparison on is this one and this one. They're the only two. Because the other, the other two are, are, are well outside that bound, that bound, okay? So what we're looking for here is the idea that um, 1.5 is the same as negative one and a half. And we can see that here, negative one and a half as a fraction would be four eighths, okay? So we know now from this that negative one and five eighths is actually a bit, a bit smaller, so it's a bit further along the negative side of things, okay? Um, so we don't actually have to find common denominators for all of these, you, you could, but it's not necessary. Um, so if we're looking at which one is the smallest, um, negative 3.12 is the smallest, okay? And that will become apparent because it will go obviously onto a number line about there. Negative 3.12. Okay. Um, and then uh, the next smallest will be negative 1 and 5 eighths. So here's negative 1 and a half is here. All right. Now that will be negative 1.5. And then just smaller than that. And let's do a little will be negative one and five eighths. It's just smaller than that, okay? Um, and then negative one quarter, okay, here's half, so that'll be a quarter, so that'll be there, that'll be negative one quarter. And that's our, our four things in order, um, smallest to largest. Now, if you were asked to write them smallest to largest, okay, then um, as a list, then it'd be the same order, negative 3.2, negative 1 and 5 eighths, negative 1.5, uh, and negative 1 quarter. We'd better write them all in order smallest to largest. So here we have cube root of 8. Okay, so cube root of 8. So this is what, um, basically it's, it's, the answer's 2, but it's, it's 2 by 2 by 2 equals two cubed, so two cubed becomes eight, equals eight, so therefore the cube root of eight equals two. Okay, so that part of this equals two, and then uh, negative one cubed is negative one times negative one times negative one, okay, so one times one times one, so this is going to be obviously one, and you just got to decide whether it's going to be negative or positive. Well, it's a negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative, so it becomes take away, take away one. Okay, so this, this subtraction space, this one becomes a negative, so that becomes two plus, two plus one, and so the answer is three. So here, um, you can bottom us again, so um, it's the negative of the square root of nine, which is three, and then take away two, okay? And that's all in brackets, okay? So divided by five. And so negative three, take away two becomes negative five. So negative five divided by five equals negative one, okay? Because negative one times five equals, neg equals negative five. We can see here we've got a negative and a positive, okay? So we can do those ones left to right, and we're gonna obviously we're gonna um, resolve the, the brackets first, okay? So, um, the rule here, a over b, x equals a to the x over b to the x. So always make sure you make use of the formula sheet um, for these types of questions, okay? Because otherwise you, would, you might just be guessing. So now we can see that the a in this one is the three here, so it becomes three um, squared, okay? So that becomes three squared um, um, over the top of two squared. 
okay? So three squared is nine, over the top of two squared, which is four, okay? So we've got now negative two take away a half, okay? So that becomes negative two um, and a half, okay? And we've got to add onto that nine over four, okay? Um, so uh, two twos are four and one is five, negative five over two plus nine over four. And then we need common denominators at that point, so that one here will be times by two times by two. Okay, so now that's going to equal uh, negative 10 over 4 plus 9 over 4. Nine over, negative 10 plus 9 is going to equal negative 1. That's going to equal negative 1 over 4, so negative 1 quarter. Here we have um, a series of rectangles. This one here is labelled A. This one here is labelled B, and this bit here is seen as the shaded area, okay, where obviously A and B um, are the shaded area, okay. The first thing you can ask us is to create um, algebraic expressions for um, the length and width of the shaded area, okay. So we need um, a width of this part here, okay, and then we need a length of that part there, okay. So um, let's do the length first, first. So the length is that length, so it's 3x plus the 2. And now the width, so the width is this distance all along here, take away that bit there, because that leads to that bit here, okay? So that becomes 3x take away 7. Um, now it says write uh, an expression for the area of this, this here, okay, of A and B, right? So A, so what we can do here is we can now add that. So this is 3x minus 7. Is this bit here? Okay. Um, and so we can see here that A is going to be uh, length times width. So it'll be, uh, so A will equal uh, 3x minus 7 times by 2. Okay, and we need to put that in brackets to protect it. Now, obviously, we would rewrite that as 2, 3x minus 7 to have it in that more algebraic format, okay? And then part B would be, as a, uh, would be uh, the 3x, and that would be multiplied by um, this, this length here, okay? Which is 3x minus 7, okay? Again, we'll protect it like that, and that becomes 3x 3x minus 7 as such. Now, um, but that's the area of B, and that's the area of A. Write an expression for the total shaded area, okay? So those, those combined, and it says to expand and simplify, okay? So if we know it's this one here, and this one here, so we need to add those together, so it's 2, 3x minus 7, plus 3x, 3x minus 7, like this. Okay, so we, we've got um, the area of A here, and we've got the area of B here. So that's, that's the area of A, that's the area of B. And so we need to add them together in order to find the total area of A and B. First thing we need to do here is to expand our brackets, okay? And then once we've expanded our brackets, we will then collect like terms and solve. So 2 times 3x is 6x. Uh, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Plus 3x by 3x will be 9x squared. And 3x by negative 7 will be uh, negative 21x. Okay. So now we want to gather our like terms. Okay. Um, so let's put, uh, so 6x uh, take away 21x take away 14 and plus 9x squared, okay? Um, so that gives us uh, 6 take away 21 will, uh, will give us uh, 15, negative 15x take away 14 plus 9 x squared 
um, which we can rewrite as 9x squared take away 15x take away 14 in order to have it in the correct order, um, not the break point of view. Okay, so 5y over 12 take away 3y over 10, so this is the common denominator question, okay? We have different denominators, and we can only do subtraction of fractions if we have common denominators, okay? So common denominator here um, would be uh, 60 for both. So we want to multiply that by 5 and multiply that by 5. So we've done to the bottom, we do to the top. And we want to multiply that one by 6 and that one by 6, okay? Um, so we end up with there for with these common denominators of 60, okay? 5 times 5y is 25y. Take away 6 times 3y is 18y. Um, 25 take away 18 leaves. Uh, 7y over 60. Okay, so here we have um, an expression on top bottom of this fraction, and we're wanting what we want to do is here is to cancel. That's what, what yells out as it's here. We go, we want to cancel in order to solve this. But we can't cancel because we've got this addition. We have to have multiplication in order to cancel. So what we're looking for here is to factorize. Okay, so we're looking for something that is common to both of these expressions, okay? And we can see here that x is common to both, okay? So x will be uh, common to both and then we know we can see here that um, 8 goes into both these numbers okay so plus positive 8 like this okay um, and then what we can look there now and see that okay so what we have a problem here though is we can't put 12 and 9 out the front okay so we can see here that 3 is also common to both of those okay and so now we end up with 3x plus 8 over 3x plus 8. Now, we've got one more step to do before we, we, factor, before we finish factorising, and that is uh, four, 4 times 3x gives us 12x, and 4 times 8 gives us 32, and 3 times 3x gives us 9x, and 3 times 8 gives us 24. So now we've got um, factorised top and bottom, okay? And what we can do here is because we know that with this scenario in algebra that there is a multiplication in here, okay? That means we can cancel that 3x plus 8 with that 3x plus 8. And that leaves us 4 over 3, okay? Now you can leave that as that in this scenario or you can simplify it to 1 and 1 for if you wish to. Okay, so here we have uh, just a multiplication question with some A and B, and we have it an A to, A to the zero. And on our formula sheet, it tells us that A to zero equals one, okay? So um, we, what we can see here is that becomes, we can replace that, that A to the zero as one. So it becomes four multiplied by one multiplied by B is what that becomes. So that effectively becomes four times one is four, times B is four B. Um, and then we're multiplying that by negative uh, 6a5b. So we can just put negative 6a5b like that, okay? Um, because here, it's effectively a one times each of those. There's nothing else to resolve there, okay? Um, now it's as simple as going four times negative six is negative 24. Uh, none, there's no a that multiplies, so that just stays as a to the five and b times b is b squared. Negative 24, a to the five, b squared. So we had this question given to us and we need to go to our, our set of rules to know that a to the x, in brackets to the y, equals a to the x, y, okay? So what that means is that when we're trying to resolve this bracket here, we're going to be multiplying the two by the one that's here, even though it's not shown, and the two by the five that's here, okay? And to, so that then creates this scenario. So we have um, negative four squared, so that becomes uh, 16. A to the five becomes A to the five times two, so A to the 10. And M to the one times two times N squared. And that's all over 16 A five N, okay? And that's multiplied by three N over 15 m to the 5, okay? So we've now got rid of the brackets, now we can do some cancelling, okay? 
So we can see here that we can cancel that 16 with that 16. We can cancel that five there, okay, um, with five of those, and we can cancel that M with one of the M's here, okay. Um, we can cancel that three with that to give us five, and we can cancel that M with one of those to give us four, okay. So now we're reading across, we have A to the five, M to the one, so A to the five, and M to the one, okay, um, over, okay, and we got rid of all of that, so that's over one, multiplied by one over the top of five, uh, M to the, M to the four, okay. Now we can also cancel here, so we can cancel that M with one of those, that kind of goes to three, okay, and then we can, across A five times one is A to the power of five, all over 1 times 5, n to the 3. Okay, change of venue. So, uh, this question looks at this idea of um, uh, an outfit, and it gives us some items in that outfit. Um, I think crucial in this reading this question is to carefully read where it says things using of. So for example, it tells us the cost price of the shoes, 340, so there's a bit of key information. Then it tells us this statement here, the cost price of the dress is 300% the cost price of the shoes. And that statement on its own gives you the equation, okay? So 300% of the cost price of the shoes, which we know up here is $340. So that gives you your equation, and from there, it's just a case of 300% is 300 over one, over 300 over 100, of is multiplication, and 340 over one, okay? Um, and so once we get that, we can um, then do some, uh, obviously cancel those, three, two zeros with those two zeros there, and it becomes three times 340, which gives us an answer of $1,020, okay? Um, so th that's really the reading of that question. Okay, the next question tells us to find the cost price of the hat, and it tells us that it's 40% of the cost price of the dress. Now, the cost price of the dress we found in part A. So that value there is 1,020, okay? So now, exactly like the first question, part A, we've got our 40%, so it's 40 over 100, of becomes times and 1,020 over one, and again, we can cancel that zero there with that zero there, that zero there with that zero there, and we end up with this four multiplied by um, 102, okay? and that gives us uh, 408 as our answer for the cost price of the hat. Okay, part C asks us to find the percentage of the cost price of the shoes compared to the value of the uh, entire outfit. Now, both these bits of information are given to you um, in the paper. Um, so it's really just a case of making a fraction out of those. So really, a percentage is what fraction, okay? So we have here 340 over 2,000, and to turn any fraction into a percentage, we simply need to multiply by 100 over one. Just like in the previous couple of questions, we have this the two zeros here, we can, we can cancel the two zeros there, and we have uh, one zero there, we can cancel one zero there, and then we have 34 over two, two goes into itself once, two goes into 34 17 times. So now we end up with 17 multiplied by one is 17, and one times one, so we can ignore that, and that gives us 17 and it's a percentage that we're being asked for. Um, make sure that you refer back to the question, um, because of what we saw sometimes here is that students, because they've done dollar signs in the previous two questions, will put a dollar sign in front of this, 
just always understand what's the question asking you to actually um, give as an answer and make sure that you put the correct symbol next to it. Part D asks us to find the selling price of this outfit. And so what we need to consider for this uh, are two factors. Firstly, what's the markup? So this is the profit that um, the seller's gonna take. And then we need to add onto that GST. So here we can see that the markup's 170%. So the final price is going to be um, the, the cost price plus the markup. So the cost price is going to be 100%. So 100% of what you pay for something, plus the markup that the person has put on that item, in this case it's 70%. So that gives us a total markup of 100, sorry, a total price of 170% of the cost price, okay, which in this case is a, a $2,000 outfit. So now we can use this statement here to create our equation. So 170% becomes 170 over 100, of becomes times and then 2,000 over one. And again, so 100 goes itself once, and then we cross out two zeros here. And then we end up with 170 times 20, okay? And that's going to give us our final price here, which is 3,400. $3,400. So that's the first part of that particular question. The second part then asks you to add on the GST onto that. So you need to add on 10% of this. Now, most students are going to be able to look at that 3,400 price and go, well, no 10% of that's going to be $340. So they're simply gonna go plus 340, okay? And that's gonna give them a final price of 3740. Um, you could go through the process of going 10% uh, of 3,400 and go 10 over 100 times by 3,400 over 1 and go 10 times 34 is 340 and then add that on to, to, to do it that way. But most students would just look at 10% and know how to work that out um, because that's part of our course of study. Okay, so now we have a series of angles we need to find from a variety of questions. So the first one looks at, at this. Um, so the idea here is to realise that you have this straight line here. Okay, so therefore the angle that goes around here has to equal 180 degrees. Okay, equals a straight line. And so therefore 180 take away 40 plus 60 will equal A. So therefore A equals, well that's obviously 100. And we just note take that there. So 180 take away 100 is going to leave us with 80 degrees. Next diagram um, looks a little, bit, a little bit complicated. So the idea here would be the first thing before you start trying to tackle what the angle is, is to look at what information that you've been given. So we see here, that we, in fact we have two triangles, okay? One here and one here. And we can see here that we have this um, matching set of lengths here. So what it tells us is that this triangle here is an isosceles triangle. And we can see that on the other side, we also have an isosceles triangle. And what we know with isosceles triangles is this, that these sides are the same length and that these angles are equal to one, one, to one another as well. So what it tells us is that if if those sides are the same and those angles are the same, then that 35 here is also a 35 in here. And it's also a 35 in here. And a 35 in here. Like that, okay? Now, once we know that, we can then go to the idea that um, every triangle is equal to 180 degrees in total degrees, and we have here 35 and 35. So 35 and 35, 70. So 180 take away 70 is going to equal 110 degrees. So that tells us that in here, it's 110 degrees in here. And it's 110 degrees 
in here, okay? So now we can consider that this is actually a full revolution here, okay? And we know that a full circle adds up to 360 degrees, so 360 take away 110 plus 110. So 110 plus 110 is 220. So 360 take away 220, gonna leave us with 140 degrees. So therefore T is going to be equal to 140 degrees. Okay, the next question has these uh, two uh, parallel lines here. Okay, so what we can see here is we have 81 degrees here and we have a corresponding angle which is x. So simply we can say that x equals 81 and we would give the reasoning that it is corresponding um, in this particular diagram. Last one diagram has um, this sort of quadrilateral shape um, with these crossing lines here. And what we know with the crossing lines here is that anything here is going to be vertically opposite. So here we can see that M is vertically opposite 131, so therefore M equals 131 degrees. We can then use that bit of information to consider the quadrilateral. We know with a quadrilateral that it has to add up to 360 degrees. So now we have 360 take away 131, which we just found here, plus 103, plus 83. Okay, so, and that adds up to 317. So 360 take away 317 is going to leave us with 43 degrees. N therefore equals 43 degrees.